Good morning, Next Level Church. My name is Jason. I'm so glad that you are here with us today. Our service is going to start in a few moments. We're starting a brand new series. You still have time to like and share this worship experience. Because guess what? Worship starts in a few moments. Next Level Church, my name is Jason, and I'm so happy that you took out a few moments out of your schedule to spend with us to worship virtually here today. Today we're starting a brand new series, but before we go any further, would you mind praying with me? God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for who you are and how much you love us and how much you care for us. Continue to keep us and cover us as we continue to go through the rest of this service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Listen, last week was Easter. Before we start our service, I want to know, especially for the kids, what did you all get in those Easter baskets? For me, I got my nice little hat, Groku. So please drop that in the chat. But do me a favor, I, we're starting a brand new series today, Movies, Modern Day Parables. It's an amazing series. 
You don't want to miss it. So I'm trying to talk, give you a few more moments to like and share this worship experience. Because, but I can't hold off anymore. The worship team is ready to go. So you know what comes next. Worship starts right now. Good morning, Next Level Church Online. We're so glad you're joining us in worship today. We're going to sing about the joy that we have in Jesus. Let's sing out together. In Jesus, there is nothing like your presence. I will sing of all your goodness. With all my fears be to praise. Savior, Savior, there is nothing like your freedom. I'm dancing with the hope of heaven, where all my fears be to praise. Sing all I want, and all I want, oh, if you listen to me, all I want, living in your victory. Dancing with the hope of heaven, where all my fears be to praise. And all I want, oh, if you would listen to me, all I want, living in your victory, all I want, let your glory fill this place. This joy, this joy, when I sing your name, this joy. Jesus Christ the righteous 
had to just sing that and proclaim that today. Oh, we love you. It's your name I pray. Amen. Hello, my name is Tabitha. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Here at Next Level, our mission is to love Jesus, love people, and make a difference. Every month, we find a way to focus on the latter by collaborating with one of our strategic partners. We are currently partnering with FreeKind. FreeKind, formerly known as Virginia Beach Justice Initiative, is a faith-based nonprofit organization dedicated to providing survivors of human trafficking the support they need to recover from the trauma they've experienced. Well, runners, take your mark, get ready, get set, go. That's right, this is the weekend that FreeKind is hosting the Off Ramps 5K at Mariners Park. If you haven't done so already, sign up to be a part of the race. If you are not a runner, you can sign up to volunteer in several different stations. Next Level Family, we almost have complete coverage of the water stations. We have one more serving opportunity here. You can also be a part of this by financially partnering with the project. 100% of what is collected for this project will go to FreeKind. Remember, this is the last week to sign up as the race is happening this Saturday. Don't delay. Click the link that our hosts have provided in the chat. And now, would you help welcome our discipleship pastor, Eric. Hey, what's up, Next Level Online? My name's Eric. I'm the discipleship pastor. For the next few moments, I want to share how you can stay in the know. I want to begin by saying welcome back to those of you that visited with us for Easter for the very first time and now you've chose to stick around. I want to say welcome to those that maybe this is your very first Sunday with us. 
Well, I want to extend an invitation for you to take something called the Stick for Three Challenge. It's really simple. We just want you to stick around Next Level for at least three visits. And during that time, to prayerfully consider if this is the church that God is calling you to, uh, to get planted into, the place where you can get connected with other people, learn about Jesus, pursue Him as we seek to live out the kingdom together. If you'd like to sign up for that challenge, we're going to drop a link right below. All you do is just fill out some basic information. And then when you completed the challenge, let us know and we have a free gift for you as a way of saying thank you. Also, coming up next Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon, right after our second service at church, we have our Next Steps Lunch and Learn available as an opportunity for you to come learn about Next Level, find out what makes us tick, hang out with other people that are newer to Next Level. And if you, wanna, uh, if you wanna be a part of that, you need to go ahead and sign up today. Do not delay, we'll drop another link right below. We'll provide childcare, we'll provide you a meal, and it will be an awesome time together. Also, a couple other things that you need to know is we have our child dedication service coming up on Mother's Day. That's May 8th. It happens during both of our in-person services. So if you want to be a part of dedicating your child to the Lord in front of our congregation and then our congregation also just uh, affirming our support for you, then we want you to go ahead and jump in and do that. Also, one new thing for you, and I'm so excited about this, happening on May 21st, we've got something else for the ladies of Next Level and the ladies that are in your life. It is the wonderfully made gathering for women. It's gonna be a brunch that's gonna happen from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's gonna be a great time together. Ladies, you're gonna have brunch. You're gonna to get to hang out with other women right here, uh, whether ladies right here at Next Level or your neighbors or anybody you wanna invite. You're gonna have games, trivia, a fun time, and you're gonna learn about how God has wonderfully made you to live for His purposes. This is a can't miss event. And here's the great news about it. It only costs $10, $10. That means brunch, materials, everything. That's a steal. So go ahead and sign up. You have from now until May 15th to sign up. Do not delay. So we want you to absolutely be a part of this. Well, we are getting ready to kick off our uh, message series, Movies, Modern Day Parables. You're gonna be hearing from our lead pastor, Rob. And so I hope that you will get ready and let's hear from God together. And now let's welcome Pastor Rob. Hello, Next Level Online. Today we are kicking off a brand new series that is a returning series. It's a series that we do annually called Movies Modern Day Parables. And this is a series where we look at movie clips that help us uh, learn something a little bit about, about God. Now, uh, most people that attend Next Level Church absolutely love this series. But I know that every Sunday is someone's first time. So maybe if you're new, you're, you might be thinking, I don't really get this. How do movie clips tell us about God? And maybe you're thinking, this doesn't seem very spiritual. And if that's you, I just want to ask you to reserve your judgment. There is a spiritual reason why we do this series. And it's actually something that we saw from Jesus's life. When Jesus was teaching, the scripture tells us that he used something called a parable. In Matthew 13, 34, it says, Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in, there's the word, parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So Jesus did not teach without a parable. A parable is simply a story with a point. In Jesus' day and age, they didn't have movies. They didn't have television. They didn't have YouTube. They didn't have the ability to show clips. And so Jesus talked to the crowd in parables. 
And every parable had a point. Now, what's interesting is, is a lot of the people didn't care about the point. They just enjoyed the parable. They enjoyed the story. And that's very much like our movies today. There are a lot of people who just enjoy the entertainment and they don't ask the question, what is the point? I want to encourage you with every entertainment that you watch, with everything you put before your eyes, to ask, what is the point? Because every movie has a point. All right, well, almost every movie. There are some movies that are pointless. Like there's a movie called Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. True story. It's a real movie, and that is pointless. Like that is absolutely ridiculous. There are some pointless films out there that like I don't know what they were thinking, but almost every movie out there, when it was created, it has a point, and there's some point to it to get us to think, to get us to laugh, to get us uh, to, to challenge us. Like there's always a point behind it, and so... I want to encourage you to ask the question, what is the point of this? Oftentimes, we miss the point of the film because we see the surrounding elements. Like, for example, today's film that we're going to feature is uh, is a great film. It has lots of action. Uh, it has some comedy in it. It has some heartfelt moments. And with all the stuff going on in the movie, it can be easy to miss the point. Well, today's feature film came out in 2021, and it was a massive hit. The film made one8 billion dollars. It was the biggest movie of last year and the sixth biggest movie of all time. Now, I personally think this movie should have an asterisk by it because the numbers of this movie, the amount of money this movie has made has been like phenomenal. It's blown so many expectations out of the water, but it did it during the pandemic and movies just have not made the same amount of money that they did before the pandemic. Less people are going to the theaters. So the fact that this movie made so much money is actually an even bigger deal than if it would have come out three years ago. So without further ado, I present to you today's modern day parable, Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, Uh, you'll see an image up on your screen. And one disclaimer that I want to give, we absolutely love that you are a part of the online service, uh, but you will not be seeing actual movie clips. You'll be seeing images. And there's a reason for that. Um, By law, we don't have the ability to show movie clips, especially when we air this on, on YouTube or Facebook. We'll get flagged for that. And so we don't have permission to do that. So this is a series that if you are physically able, I would highly encourage you to come in person and check it out where we'll be able to show movie clips. But we value our online service. And so we want to make sure that you still get the content. And so I'll still explain the film, but you're going to get it through through images. Um, so in the film, Spider-Man No Way Home, if you have not seen it, uh, then it is uh, a movie about Spider-Man and it picks right back up after the film that came uh, before it in the Spider-Man uh, trilogy. In the last film, it, it leaves off with the bad guy, Mysterio, revealing to the world Spider-Man's secret identity. It's Peter Parker. And this film picks up with the whole world knowing who Spider-Man is and it is wreaking havoc on Peter Parker's life. It's ruining everything. It's making his life so complicated. And so he gets an idea that he needs a little bit of help, and he goes to see one of his fellow Avengers, one another superhero. He goes to see him to see if he can help him out. The guy's name is Dr. Strange, and he asks if there's anything he can do to help him fix this situation. And Dr. Strange's plan is to uh, create something that is going to cause uh, everyone to forget who Peter Parker is is. Well, that leads to some complications because as Dr. Strange is making everyone forget, Peter starts to realize, well, that means my mom or my my aunt will forget. Uh, That means that my girlfriend will forget. And he starts tinkering with, with everything going on and it ends up creating a huge mess. Well, because Peter tinkered with it, Um, What ends up happening is instead of everyone forgetting, it ends up opening something that we call the multiverse. Now, just hold on. If you're like, I could care less about superheroes, superhero movies, what in the world are we talking about? Just take a pause. I promise you this is going somewhere. And it all it all matters. The multiverse is something that is, is, is pretty interesting. It's this idea that there are other universes that are similar to ours, but they have differences. So for example, if the multiverse was real, that would mean that 
in some universe somewhere, there would be a Rob Shepherd, but instead of being a lead pastor, uh, he would be like a Satanist. Like it would be the opposite of me. Or the multiverse could mean that there's some universe where Rob Shepherd has a very similar personality to me, but he's not so incredibly good looking like I am. I'm kidding, kidding, just, just kidding. Just making sure you're paying attention. But that's, you get the idea that there's the same people, the same names in other universes, but there's differences. So that's the idea of this of this multiverse. And this leads to a scene that uh, is pretty exciting for people who've been following along with Spider-Man. In, uh, in the early 2000s, uh, the first Spider-Man franchise came out and the current Spider-Man franchise that we have has had nothing to do with it. It was a reboot. It had no, no connections to it. But in this film, as you're watching this, the multiverse starts to open up and we see a villain, Doc Ock, who is from those early 2000 Spider-Man films. And this was really exciting for, for fans. And Spider-Man is dealing with, 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 with Doc Ock. He's trying to figure out what's going on because he doesn't know who he is. He's never seen him before. And as he's having a battle with him, uh, he wraps things up. At least he kind of like ties him up. And at that moment, another bad guy from the multiverse opens uh, comes onto the scene. His name is the Green Goblin. From here, things really start to get interesting because Spider-Man now has these villains who are trying to kill him, but they're coming from other dimensions. And one of them ends up running into his, his aunt and his aunt calls Spider-Man and is like, hey, I've got one of those guys here. And so he rushes to go see his aunt. And when he shows up to see his aunt, his aunt is sitting there with the Green Goblin. Spider-Man is freaked out about this. He's thinking he's going to kill him. But what his aunt encourages him to do is to try to rehabilitate, to try to save the Green Goblin. And she pitches this idea that, um, that everyone is worth trying to save. Now, I don't want to move past that too quickly. Everyone is worth trying to save. Even bad guys, even villains, even people who are evil, everyone is worth trying to save. And so because of, of his aunt's advice, Peter sets out to try to save these villains. But when he tells Dr. Strange, Dr. Strange immediately thinks it's a horrible idea. And they end up having a, a, a kind of tussle back and forth. And, and, and Peter ends up locking Dr. Strange, uh, it, it, like locking him away for a temporary fix so that he can help work on these bad guys. And that leads to our, our next scene. Uh, this is where Peter recruits the help of his friends. His girlfriend... MJ and his best friend, Ned, he recruits them to help. And when, the, when they pitch this to the bad guys, hey, like, we're going to try to help you. We're going to help save you. The bad guys uh, uh, immediately push back. The ones that are from the other multiverse, they're, they're like, no, we don't want to be saved. And they're like, okay, here's the deal. We can send you back. But if we send you back, you're going to die instantly because the world that you came from, you all died. And so you've been transported to our world right before you died. And so these are your options. You can either let us try to save you or you can go back to your world, which will mean that you die. And one of the bad guys says to Peter and his friends, like, why, why would you do this? And Peter's girlfriend says, this is just what we do. We're just in the saving business. It's just what we try to do. Everyone is worth saving. So Peter then, with his friends, goes to try to cure and to help all these bad guys. Well, it's a superhero film, so of course things don't go like the way that they're supposed to be. To, to go and all sorts of chaos happens and all sorts of calamity ensues. And uh, his aunt ends up getting a part of the action and there's like all sorts of things falling apart and there's all this drama. And at that moment, Peter Parker asks the question, is this worth it? Was all this worth it? Maybe we made a mistake because we're trying to help these bad guys and they rebelled against our help. They've caused so much, so many issues. And his aunt stops him in his tracks and his aunt says this, the image will come up on the screen. She says, you have a gift, a power. With great power, there must also come great responsibility. Now, if you have not seen the film, I left a lot for you to still see. I did not spoil some of the best parts of the movie, and I recommend it. I think it is a really good film. But what I want to point out is that doing good costs Peter a lot. And it costs him so much, it, it led him to wonder, is this worth it? Is it worth it to risk my life? Is it worth it to try to save bad guys? Is it worth it to try to save good people who end up turning on me? Is it worth it? 
Should I just stop being a superhero and just live the easy life? And the answer to that is no, because with great power comes great responsibility. This parable, this movie fits perfectly in line with some of the themes that we find in the New Testament. And I wanna show you this. Uh, our, our, our text is gonna come from a guy by the name of Paul, often referred to him as the Apostle Paul. And I think you're gonna pretty quickly see how what Paul says fits with the exact parable of Spider-Man No Way Home. Well, at Next Level, we honor the text. The way that we do that is by standing to our feet. We read it nice and loud. And then when we get to the, ref the reference, we have a little bit of fun. Galatians 6, 9, you'll see two dots between the six and the nine. We just pump our fists at those and say dot, dot. I wanna invite you to do the dot, dot with us. Will you read it with me nice and loud, wherever you're watching this at? Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, dot, dot, 9. Will you pray with me? God, we just come before you, and we ask that you would speak to our hearts. We know that you can use anything to speak to our hearts, including movies, and we ask right now that you would just draw our hearts to you, that you would help us to hear clearly from you, and you'd help us to do um, what only you can do. We ask that you would give us the courage to obey you even when we're scared. And God, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may have a seat. So I wanna dive into our text uh, because I think you're gonna see pretty quickly how this connects with the film that we've just been talking about. We're gonna start with Galatians 6, verses 1 through 2. This is Paul writing. He says, Christian brothers... If a person is found doing some sin, you who are stronger Christians should lead that one back into the right way. Do not be proud as you do it. Watch yourself because you may be tempted also. Help each other in troubles and problems. This is the kind of law Christ asks us to obey. So in Spider-Man No Way Home, Peter's aunt, Aunt May, challenges him to help the bad guys. And the reason that she challenges him to help the bad guys is because with great power comes great responsibility. Did you catch what Paul said? Paul said, listen, if you are a Christian and you find a person who is doing some sin, you are the stronger Christian if you're not struggling with that sin. And you should do everything in your power to lead that person back to the right way. But be careful. Don't be proud in it. Don't think that you're better than them. Don't, don't look down on them because they sin differently than you do. Watch yourself because you may become tempted also. He then says, help each other in troubles and problems. This is the kind of law that Christ asks us to obey. So what does God ask us to do? Help each other out. What does God ask us to do? To help each other, especially with troubles and problems. Let's see what Paul says next. Galatians 6, verse 7 through 8. It says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Now, at first, these verses don't seem like they connect with the other ones. Like where Paul is saying, hey, help someone out. If you find them sinning, if you find, especially if they're a Christian and you find that they're struggling or they're sinning, uh, don't judge them. Don't come down hard on them. Help love them, coach them, help, help, help them find the truth. But be careful in it because if you're not careful, you might end up being pulled, pulled down. And then he says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. At first, this doesn't seem like it connects, but it does. It connects so great because Paul is saying that faith and, and the stuff that we do is like seeds, so often in our lives, when we make decisions, we make decisions based off emotions. Do I feel like doing it or not, right? That's often the filter that we use. Do I feel like exercising or not? Do I feel like saving money or not? Do I feel like spending money? Do I feel like uh, you know, going out on this date? Do I feel like volunteering at church? Do I feel like going to church? We allow our emotions to dictate so much of the decisions that we make. But that's a very dangerous thing to let dictate our decisions, right? Because our emotions can lie to us and our emotions can lead us to do things that we regret. Paul and Jesus also said something very similar to this, that when we make decisions, we need to think through it like seeds. When you are planting seeds, you are planting seeds to produce a certain type of fruit. 
and the fruit may take years to produce. You could plant a a, a seed for a lemon tree and it may take you two, three years before you get the fruit. But if you take care of the seeds and you water the seeds and you keep taking care of them, eventually a fruit will be produced. But did you know it's the same thing with bad choices that we make? Everything in our life, it's not a matter of do we feel like it or not. Sometimes it's not even a matter of is this, is this right or wrong. What the real thing that we need to wrestle with is what type of seeds am I planting? Are you planting seeds that are going to produce a good fruit or are you producing seeds, planting seeds that are going to produce bad fruit? And when you start to think through your decisions like this, it changes everything. Because see, so often we think about, can I get away with it? Well, that's the wrong question to ask. Because you may get away with it for a little while, but eventually that's a seed in the wrong direction. And eventually that mindset will lead you to get into trouble. So the question is not, can I get away with it? The question is not, uh, does anyone care? The question is not like, do I feel like doing it? The question is, what type of seeds am I planting? Am I planting seeds that are going to produce a great fruit or am I, pr- and I said great fruit, not great fruit, or am I producing seeds that are going to produce negativity? Here's something to write down if you're taking notes. I encourage you to do that. If my decisions are like seeds, what type of seeds am I planting in my life? If my decisions are like seeds, what type of seeds am I planting in my life? In the film Spider-Man, you see this all throughout it, that the bad guys continue to plant seeds that that go in the negative direction and the fruit of it is dysfunction. What Aunt May challenges Peter to do is to plant seeds in the good direction. He doesn't feel like helping out the bad guys, but she says, no, this is what we do. This is just what we do. This is, this is what we're called to do. We're called to make a difference. It doesn't matter if you feel like it or not. You've been given a power and with great power comes responsibility. It's the same thing in the Christian's life. In the Christian's life, if you are saved, you've been given a power. It is the power of God. And so the question is not, do you feel like it or not? It doesn't matter if you feel like it. With great power comes great responsibility. If you've been given the light of Jesus, you are responsible for sharing that light with other people. If you've been given the light of of Jesus, you are responsible with making a difference. You are responsible with helping other people out. You are responsible with changing the world. You are responsible with helping people even when they don't want to be helped. And this leads to, to some turmoil, Right? Because if you're someone who's tried to help other people out and you're trying to be a, uh, you know, a godly person and you're trying to walk with God and you're trying to plant seeds in the right direction and yet you see all around you that there's just brokenness and you see all around you that there's just hurting and pain and it can lead you to say, well, what's the point of all this? And that's the, the question that Peter asks. What's the point of all this? I'm trying to help people and it's, it's just causing calamity. Like these people are so broken and they're so hurt. And like, I don't even know if I'm making a difference. And Paul is setting up this idea that, listen, don't think about things in the moment. Think about seeds. Are you planting the right seeds? Are, are you trying to make a difference? Because eventually it's gonna pay off. Look at what he says next, Galatians 6, 9. Paul says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Doing the work of God is not easy. It's just not. Maybe you have someone in your life who doesn't know God. Maybe you have someone in your life that you've prayed for. Maybe you have someone in life that you've invited to church and they've just said no, and you've started to become discouraged and you're like, like, is it even worth it? Maybe you're in a relationship with someone who just continually makes poor choices and you've thought to say, oh, I just give up. I've tried four or five times to help them and they're just, they're helpless. I'm just gonna give up. I'm just gonna throw in the towel. But with great power comes great responsibility. And the responsibility is to be faithful and to continue to plant seeds in the right direction. The responsibility is to plant seeds even when other people reject them. The responsibility is to keep doing the right thing even when others don't do the right thing. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't say this person is hopeless. They will never change. Don't say this relationship will never be fixed. That's hopeless. We have a God who rose from the dead. There is always hope. There is always a chance for a second chance, a third chance. There's always hope for redemption. There's always hope for someone to change their life. Don't give up. Keep planting seeds in the right direction and you may never know the difference that you'll make. 
You keep doing what you're supposed to be doing even when other people push back. And watch, one day, one day, those seeds are going to make a difference. We live in such a, a culture that is such a quick fix. It's such a microwavable culture. We just want things to happen instantly. And this teaching pushes back against our modern day culture because seeds take a lot of time. And so maybe you're frustrated because you're like, hey, I'm trying to make some changes and I've gone to church a few weeks or I've tried to hang out with the right people and I'm just not seeing a difference. Well, Paul would say all those are seeds that are planted in the right direction. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't stop doing what you're supposed to be doing. Eventually, it's going to pay off. Look at what Paul says next, Galatians 6.10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So therefore, what's the there for? The there is for because everything in life is like planting seeds. We're either planting seeds in the right direction or the wrong direction. Because of that, keep planting seeds in the right direction. Don't give up hope. Don't stop. Like just keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Keep making the right decision. Keep showing up to church. Keep serving. Keep reading your Bible. Keep telling people about Jesus. Keep trying to make a difference. Keep doing good in the world. It may not seem like it's making a difference, but you're planting seeds in the right direction. Keep doing it. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of God. So in the film Spider-Man, his motivation is what his aunt says, that the reason he should not give up is because with great power comes great responsibility. For Christians, the reason we should not give up is a very similar thing. We have a great power. That power is Jesus. And because of that, we should not give up hope. I know the world seems dark and it seems like people are making crazy decisions and the world seems like it's just rebelling against Jesus's values and it just seems like there's negativity all around. Do good anyway. If you are a Christian, you have been given a great responsibility and that responsibility is to bring heaven to earth. Your responsibility is to share the love of Jesus with everyone, even when they reject it. Do good, especially especially to other believers. So I wanna leave you a very practical challenge with all this. Um, there are gonna be times in your life where you don't feel like doing good. And there are gonna be times where your emotions are gonna dictate you. And this is where I feel like the local church plays a massive part in helping you out. When you commit to be a part of the local church, it is a commitment to plant seeds in the right direction. And I wanna challenge you, some things that you can do that are gonna help you, they're gonna help motivate you when you don't feel like doing it. There's a few things that you can do. And I just wanna give these to you. Number one, I wanna highly encourage you just to commit. Commit to be a part of church every single week. Just commit, this is your priority. This is a planting a seed in the right direction. But then I wanna challenge you to do a little bit more than that. A great way to make a difference, to do good to all people is to serve, to give back. And I wanna encourage you to get plugged in, to find a way to get plugged in back into the local church. A great way to do this is to take our, our next steps. And our next steps, uh, we, we offer the one uh, almost every single month. And you can register for next steps on our website at nextlevelchurch.net or our hosts that are watching this, uh, they can put a link in, in, in the chat for you um, to how you can quickly sign up for next steps. But I wanna encourage you, if you're not currently serving, Sign up for next steps. Take that step and learn how you can give back to make, make a difference. I wanna challenge you to commit to these things because they won't change your life instantly. They won't change your life just by doing it once, but it's planting seeds in the right direction. And I wanna encourage you to not get tired of doing good. Don't get tired of doing what you're supposed to be doing because in the end, the scripture promises us that will produce a fruit. Will you pray with me? God, we come before you and we just thank you that you are an amazing God who saves us and help us to really reflect on this teaching that you've given us a great responsibility to change the world. And we don't do it alone. We do it with your power. We do it with your strength. But God, we are human and we get so tired. So that would you help us to have endurance? Would you help us to keep doing the things that we're supposed to be doing, to not give up hope? God, we just ask that you transform our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Hey, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Uh, we want to leave you with an invitation. The invitation is, what's your next step with Jesus? Is your next step to, to place your faith in Jesus as your, as your Savior, as your Lord? Your next step, baptism? Is your next step just uh, meeting up and having some of your questions asked? Whatever your next step is, we want to be a conversation partner with you. We're going to drop a link below. Here's what you do. Just fill out some basic information, and that will come to us, and we'll reach out to you, whether that's a phone call, meeting up for a cup of coffee, whatever way is best for you. We want to be a part of your faith journey, helping you to take your next steps. Also, if you need prayer, uh, we have a prayer team that's dedicated to praying about any request that, that you have. And so, again, we'll drop a link for you and you can send in your prayer request uh, to us. Also, if you want to partner with us through giving, you can do that safely, securely by giving online. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is this. If you've been looking for a way that you can uh, make a difference, that you can, can really step in and serve and use your time and energy right here at Next Level, one way that you could do that is as we are expanding our kids' ministry programming to two services. We still need some people that will sign up to be a part of that. If you're interested in helping us out at the 9 or 1030 services as we minister to the next generation, then we would love for you to sign up and find out more information. We'll drop the link below. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We look forward to seeing you again next week, and we will see you then.